Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to tonight's performance of Treasure Island. May I have your attention for one moment, please, to go through the following safety briefing. Firstly, may I ask you to count the numbers in your party. Secondly, may I remind you that smoking is not allowed inside the building. Apart from anything else, the smoke can set off the fire alarms. In the event of a fire alarm, you'll hear a loud siren. You must then leave immediately, but calmly, by the nearest fire exit door. There are two exits located in the main hall, the first being the door you came in, the second being at the back easterly corner. Please don't all try to leave by the same door, and please do not push. Fire marshals will be in place at each door to assist where required. Once you're outside the building, please make your way to the front of the church and count the numbers in your party. If anyone is missing, please inform a fire marshal. Under no circumstances, try to re-enter the building. If it is a false alarm, we will advise you as soon as possible. May I also remind you that recording or photography of the performance is not allowed tonight. Thank you for your attention. Now sit back, relax and enjoy the show.
he delivers. <laughs> oh, and now that squire's after me for his for my rent. It's not fair, he owns half of Cornwall, and I'm just a poor lonely widow. Oh. Yes, I get married three times, you know. My first husband was a fisherman. He died after eating one of my fish pies. My second was a tin miner. He died from a homemade pasty. My third was a farmer. He had a terrible accident with a sickle. Yes, well, he would eat his pies or pasties. So I got cut off his head to bed with <laughs> Rosie Bloom, I hope you've been busy tonight. Oh, well, just the locals then. And you know, most of them don't have a couple, don't even have a couple of farthings to rub together. You know, some of them have even started bringing in their own wooden spoon with numbers on it just to get a free meal. Oh, Rosie, you'll never catch up with your bed if you, if you stop being so soft. Well, at least it keeps the place clean for you. You've got a lot behind, you know. Oh, don't you start. not for these. Oh, can't you give me a little bit more time to pay? That's a big ass. Well, so be told. <laughs> no, I said ass. Oh, that's all right, then. Why don't you rent some rooms out? There's more loot in lodging than liquor, you know. Yes, that's why all our rooms are on suite. Really? Mm -hmm. Each one's got its own private slot bucket. Oh, and I suppose they've got beaties as well. Yeah, well, we call them flannels. What do you for a five star upgrade? <laughs> what does that consist of? Well, pick the hairs out of the soap first. <laughs> But do you think you could have a word with him? Uh, have a word on yourself. Here he comes now. Ah, Jim, lad. Could I have a word? It's about my daughter. Oh, hello, Squire. I was wondering how long it would come for you to come and warn me off. But you know, it's not all one side that she feels the same way about me. That's as maybe. But don't be surprised if she's cooled off a bit the next time you see her. Oh, I see. Is that a ship in the cove? Oh, yes, but she's, she's a sad old wreck. She could do with a good scrub down. I know. Well, look at that. She needs those barnacles scraping off her bottom as well. Do you mind? I'm getting a complex. No, Rosie, we're talking about that ship out here. Oh, well, that's all right then. You know, being a merchant, I have a ship of my own, you know. A sweet little schooner called the Gold Adventure. She sails out of Bristol. Oh, I'd love to go on a sea cruise. Uh, in your dreams, Mum. Oh, talking of dreams, I really must go and get my need to sleep. Oh, in that case, I'd have a long lie if I were you. <laughs> Good night, and don't forget to keep your eyes peeled for a lodger. Thanks, there you are, sir. Did you like 
Okay. Oh, sorry for a long man. Just one more tipple of egg, yeah. That'll be my last. Okay, okay. Listen, but don't tell my mum. I won't. It's about 
despite you and that lad, Jim, I think you should stop seeing one another. Oh, but Dad! Oh, oh yes. there's someone in the door. I wonder who it can be at this time of night. Oh, I see. I wonder if it's Jim and Rosie. I was just having a word with my daughter, and I think that the two of you must never... It's a treasure map! Oh, must never be parted. <laughs> the captain's dead! Oh, well, I did warn him. Oh, and a bunch of good ones runs up to him. Oh, no, we'll go for them. Yes, they're okay. But I think this is what they were after. He gave it to me before he died. Oh, well, let's have a look. Oh, I don't believe it. This looks like the map of where the infamous Captain Flint village has gone. Oh, yes, Captain Flint! The bloodthirstiest buccaneer ever to sail the Spanish Main. Do you think it's genuine, Dad? Oh, I'm sure of it, my Dad. And it's priceless. Seven hundred thousand pounds worth, he reckon. He, he buried. Oh, I've heard of you money there in Jalant, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> Here, wait a minute, seven hundred thousand, you said? He only needs 70 times that to pay off the EU. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a pity we can't just go and dig it up. Who can't? Don't forget the golden venture. I've got the ship, you've got the map. Let's sail together and we'll split the booty between us. <laughs> All in favour, say aye. Aye! aye. Then we can all... I'll set off for Bristol first thing in the morning to set on a captain and crew for our voyage. Now, we don't need a cabin boy, Jim, you can be that. And do you think you can manage to be the ship's cook, Rosie? Oh, yeah, well, uh, down at the inn, many a seafaring folk say they're dying for one of my fish to be a don't you mean dying from? <laughs> oh, have you know, my dumplings have kept many a sailor happy. <laughs> satisfy the whole crew. Oh, well, in that case, perhaps I'd better employ a chef, and you can be his assistant. What about me, Dad? Am I going? Oh, sorry, Penny. No women on board ship. Sailors are very superstitious, you know. But Rosie's going. Yes. Ah. <laughs> There's no show without punch. Well, if I must say square, I think that Penny should be allowed to go. That's my decision, lad. Aye, and that's my map, sir. Oh, very well. We'll make an exception. Welcome aboard, my dear. Oh, thank you, Father. And now we can all look forward to a swashbuckling adventure. Oh, I can't wait to have my swashbuckles. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you all once we're shipshape and seaworthy. And then we'll be off to our island. Our treasure island. Hooray! <laughs>
Pirates. Ah. We got Jolly Roger. Ah. We got Slowly Sam. Ah. And we got Cutthroat Kates. Ah. We don't know why it's yet. I'm the welcome to the noble, the noble, the noble life of the pirates. Ah. Thank you, Lord Chicken. I mean, Captain Silver. <laughs> now you're not ready for bloodlet yet. So all Long John's decided to give you some jobs, some important tasks. So, Jolly Roger, I put you in charge of the spears department. <laughs> Spare parts for the ship. I'm talking spare parts for pirates. Like peg legs, like hooks for hands, like glass eyes, like cabbies down there. The bitch we lose in battle. Now, salty son, a very important task for you. You are going to be our whiskey biscuit de weevler. Well, those whiskey biscuits that we love on this ship, they weevils also like them too. So those beetles burrowing, and it's your task to be a knocking them out to those biscuits, as so to speak. Now, cut from Kate. I put you in charge of instruments. Oh, good. Can I talk some and sweet boxes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I mean instruments of torture. <sighs> Things like plants for the walking of. <sighs> I mean, can it write tales for that? Wrong and with! And what else have we got? A noose for gun of the yard on hang them all. You told you'd cut from Kate, don't they? And now I calls on Blind Alley and uh, Sea Snake Sally to tell me why in the name of thunder I don't have that map yet. I tracked her down, John. Oh, Billy Barnacle, like he says. Ah, and I took the black spot in her like you told me to. Yeah, but when he goes to finish him up, he already kicked the bucket and the back were gone. Oh, my God, a pair of bumbling bill tracks. I guess who I bumped into on the way here. Oh, probably everyone seems blind as you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, that gets old on John to wonder. I remember when you lose that eye in battle. But the other one, I don't. Ah, uh, well, at the battle, John, just after I went blind in this eye, well, oh me, did I not go blind in other eye as well? Uh, <laughs> Are you telling me? Uh, <laughs> you put that back on. Uh, Take it off. Oh, 
Tag war die Mädel Meet me back here at four o'clock and make sure you have a full crew with you. Well, I'll be here at four, but as regarding the crew, these things can't be rushed if we want to employ the right men. Good day. <laughs> what a handsome looking vessel that is. A finer specimen of ship you could never see. Oh, and it looks like it's ready for sailing. Excuse me, sir. I can see your navel. <laughs> What's that <laughs> You're a man of the sea. Ah, that I am, sir. Long John Silver, he calls me. First mate to the famous Admiral Hawk. Admiral Hawk? Really? Aye, ah, indeed, sir. But now just a lonely ship's cook on account of me head leg. Ship's cookie? By Jove, what a stroke of luck. I'm looking for a sea chef to start right away on my vessel, the Golden Venture. Oh, well, I be your man then, sir. Oh, what a pity there aren't more honourable seamen like you around when we need them. Well, I lose every seafaring man around these parts. And if anyone can rustle up a crew, well, it'd be old Long John Silver. Could you find a full crew by four o'clock this afternoon? <coughs> Why, certainly I can, sir. They're roughest and toughest of the salts of the seven seas. They bait pretty, but they knows the ropes, and you may wait to that. Then there's no time to lose. All hands aboard by four this afternoon. Aye, aye, sir. I shall go and do it now. Come on, I've warned you about that before. <laughs> oh, Rosie Bloom. Oh, two pints today, milkman. Oh, shoot, my dear. Hey, my dear. Action. How are you both? Did you have a good journey? Oh yes, thank you, Father. <laughs> yes, that sea you're all looking ship shape, Squire. And I'm glad to find you know that you found a captain. But, but, and I do have a good but. <laughs> yes, I know we've all seen it. As I was saying, but has he managed to find a crew yet? No, he hasn't. I've had to do it myself, I I got. Fortunately, I came across this capital fellow called Long John Silver. He brings with him a wealth of experience, and he's agreed to set on the ship's complement. We sail in the afternoon time. Oh, hurrah! <coughs> ah, Captain Mullet. Me and my daughter, Penny. Our sous chef, Rosie. And your cabin boy, Jim. This is Captain Mullet. Hello. I don't like I don't like the captain. We've got a full crew. Ah, just like that. Here comes Long John Silver and Moe. Jim, come and meet our sea crew. The one-legged man means death. service of the king, you know. Mr. Silver fought with Admiral Hawk. Ah, we're going to be such good friends, Master James, you and I. I know it to the bottom of your heart. <laughs> now, where are those men? All hands to the deck. Come on, there. Get lined up. Come on, smart, smart, smart. Oh, you have this unruly mob. Mr. Silver, Captain. I'll be I'll be frank with you, I'll be frank with you, Squire. <laughs> <laughs> they are the biggest bunch. They are the biggest bunch of scoundrels and scallywags I've ever set eyes on. But if you intend to sail with them, that's fine by me. But don't say I didn't warn you. Mr. Silver was acting under my orders, Captain. Well, if you determine to sail with the crew such as this, I will not stand in your way. The ship's company is complete. All aboard the Gulf Venture, we sail on the tide.
my life. Captain Mullet was a bit of a hard taskmaster at first, but so far he's pleased with the crew. Oh, and as for old Long John Silver and I, he and I are getting on like a house on fire. Arr, come on! Don't put a lot into you! <laughs> I never had the misfortune of eating not old Long John, oh no. But I met a salty old sea dog one day, and he sold me this parrot. He swore blindly he was Captain Flint's, so that's what I called him. Oh. A dead man and a dead man's chest. Yeah, I'm Jim, lad, you be saying. You can't touch pitch without getting tarts, says old Long John. Oh, no. he's so nice, he's so nice. And ah. um, doesn't he mean pieces of eight? Ah, he's planning for Brexit. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he must have been expensive then. Oh, he were that, Jim lad. You know, he cost me an arm and a leg. Ha <laughs> ha! I don't know what I mean. <laughs> Parrots don't go cheap, you know. No, they go ah instead. Do we need the most ah? Oh, but when I saw him, oh, he was sitting in the bottom of his cage, sick as a parrot he were. <laughs> but when I bought him, I got him on higher purchase. Oh, I see, you mean you bought him on higher purchase. Smart as a cutlass, though you are, Jim lad. Now, like yourself a brainy one, old Captain Flint went to Polytechnic, you know. Oh. Does he know he's type tables? Oh, ah, he does that. He can recite them parrot fashion. <laughs> and uh, what do you feed him on? Oh, polyfiller mainly. How do you build type silver? Oh, that'd be enough of that, Captain Flint. Time for you to go back in your cage, I say. Back in your door. There you are. Settle down for the night, you it. Now, Jim, lad, why don't you go down and give your mum a hand in the galley, and I'll join you down there in a jiffy. Oh, okay, jiffy. Oh, look, I'm doubling it, Norum. Oh, that's decided then. 
There'll be no alcohol drunk on this ship. Right. Mr. Solomon, I'll see to it that all the rum on board is locked in my cabin. I shall attend to me, Julie, sir. Actually, I'll see to it. Oh. Ah. Ah. Oh, never mind, Long John. Let's have a nice cup of coffee. Oh, ah. Now, how is your plum duff coming on there, Rosie? Oh, it's not bad, but all the fat's gone to the bottom. Oh, oh I can see that, all right. <laughs> you start as well. Oh, oh your mum's a fine cook there, Jim. Her food just melts in your mouth, so it does. Yeah, no, but aren't you meant to defrost it first? <laughs> oh, ever since the people come out and find it with dumplings and get hard to rise. <laughs> and that squire's never got nearly enough provisions. <gasps> Don't say we're going to starve. No, not on board this ship. What else players do here see we make do what we get our hands on? Oh, yeah, so Long John and I have come up with a, a list of ingredients in alternative of this. Mm. Oh, this isn't even real coffee, is it? Go. And the white now? Dark off. Oh. oh. Oh, would you like one of my speciality co coffees? Oh, yes, please, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, 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 Jim, I think we'd be best laying off that coffee for just now, you know? Oh, you're always my friend. Oh, look. Oh, some lovely grated cheese. Mm. Oh, 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 that's strong. What is it? Uh -huh. It's solid. I think you'll find it. That's the... That's where your mum was scraping the skin off our feet this morning. Oh, a really is cheese. Stinking bishop. We've got a ton of it below the wall. The tail of the sailors won't even go near it. Oh. Okay then, come on. What else have we got? Well, we got some beautiful, delicious pickled onions. Yeah, they're actually fish eyes. Oh. Um, how about some crispy bacon for your breakfast? Cockroaches, really? Oh. And we got some lovely rice if you like a bit of rice, don't you? Oh, yeah. sorry. Oh, Jesus. Oh, and my favourite, I can lick it right out of the jar. It's lemon curd, Jim. Earbox. Oh. And then we've got for afterwards. Sultanas. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, 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 Fish pie topped off with rat guts. Oh, you didn't want that on to tomorrow's dish. Oh, I think I'm going to waste it. Oh, no, don't waste it. We'll have it for lunch this morning. Oh, oh. I was about to taste that pot of oh. oh, Rosie, there ain't no rum in that. Broke the feet, no use without rum, Rosie. Oh. But we haven't got any rum. Oh, yes, we do. Long John's best vintage. Oh.
actually are, they're actually a fine bunch of seamen and hard working too. But I've only been at sea for a couple of days, so more than that, I cannot say. Well, I'm getting on famously with Long John Silver, and I'm doing all the work for him. But think of all that rich and losing Rosie. Aw, but I do feel a trifle heavier this morning. Yeah. Well, I did tell you not to eat that trifle last night. Uh, Talking of eating, how are they doing to help himself with these apples over there? The apples are free for all, Rosie. You'll never have a case of scurvy, you know what's coming yet. When you have a barrel full of apples on the journey south, filled with limes on the voyage home. A cheap price to pay for a healthy ship, I see. Yes, Come ma'am. on, let's go have a stroll round the decks. Ah, that can't be a smart one. Well, at least he's not caught on to us yet. Ah. Well, only a man didn't look so rough, John. I saw one yesterday with stitches all over his face. Ah, no, that were me. I had me back, Flavel, and back. Okay, you shipmates, it's time for some of your learning. Hey, how's about a show to John Roger here about the commander? Uh -huh. uh -huh. I bet, I bet John Roger here that I can bite my eye. Bite your eye? That's impossible. You're on. <laughs> oh no, you checked me. Did you know you had the glass eye? No, did you? Yes, it came out in conversation. Oh. <laughs> and I bet it's cut your cake. I think you might see the other eye. Well, you can't have two fox eyes. Oh. Okay, it's a bet. down to some learning from a new shipmate. Come on down and do some stimulating. Who can tell me what happens when we reach Arbor? There's no point in calling me Captain Silver when I'm a gentleman, Long John Silver, I find your pardon. When I remember, I remember about your mates. This is Long John to you. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad you think of me as your friend. Oh, that I do indeed. Will we go and have a little yarn? Alright, let's go for a little yarn. You and I, let's go for a walk and put the world to the right side. You know, this is my favourite time of the day. When the sun slows up into the horizon, and the stars show us where they've been hiding. Well, Jim, you're a man after my own heart. I don't need throw that punch to you. Oh, that's very oh. nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm glad this has turned out to be such a happy voyage. Even though you and the captain didn't quite see eye to eye at first. Well, Captain, 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 Captain Bullet, he goes by rules and charts. I, Long John, sail by the stars. Oh. Take that one up there, Joe. That'd be Polaris, the North Star. Oh, well, if, if that's north, then we must be heading southwest. <laughs> You're as smart as a gold Dublin, so you are, Joe. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. I bet you can tell the time by the stars, can't you, Long John? Oh, then I can there, <laughs> Jim Lads. <laughs> well, go on then. What time is it? Oh. I'd be saying, it's night time! Ha ha ha! Two of Jim thinks they're friends, but his trust is misplaced. I don't want John Silver, he's just very two faced. That cold hearted blackguard knows nothing but thuggery. That gold grabbing, backstabbing, life of skullduggery. And as for those pirates, just when will they strike? And when we hit land, what will it be like? Will we find the treasure? What else lies in store? For the moment, my friends, I can tell you no more.
From here on in, we need to look out on the starboard bow. The rest of you, stay sharp and go about your dreams. Will we be reaching the island soon, Captain? Any day now, Jim. Must say, Rosie, you look rather hot today. Oh, I'm glad you find me attractive, Squire. No, I mean hot and sweaty. <laughs> oh, well, what do you expect? It's about 50 degrees out here. I know, I'm not surprised how the are getting me. Oh, no, I think one of them fancies me. He rolled his eyes at me. I rolled it back because it was blind alley. <laughs> Very shortly. Right. The ship has handled well and the crew have worked hard so far. So far indeed. The man is never satisfied. There's something on the horizon, Captain. Oh, yeah. It must be another ship and we're on a collision course. <laughs> Collision course. <laughs> change course 10 degrees east. No, you change course 10 degrees west. How dare he contradict me? I am the captain of a large schooner. I repeat, you change course 10 degrees east. I suggest you change course. I am a lighthouse keeper. <laughs> Okay, what are we going to 
did he catch you with licorice? All sauce. <laughs> oh well, that's enough for me to be the skylark and make me hardies. Let's go around your trees. Oh, 
were all very well. We were eating the captain's cabin as soon as we were at anchor. Bring, bring the ship hard up to starboard and get ready to drop anchor. Now then, Jim lad, what's so urgent? Well, I overheard Mr. Silver and his crew planning a mutiny. Dear old Mom, John, never. They're going to take over the ship and kill us all. Yes, and what's more, Mr. Silver and some of the crew sailed with Captain Flint. Oh. And I'm not talking about his parrot. Oh, you mean to say that Long John and all his crew pirates? Mm -hmm. Oh, it seems I owe you an apology, Captain. What have I done? Oh, so see you as well. That's okay, Square. I can see this happening. That's why I have this insurance policy here. An exact copy of the map, but without a cross. But where's the real map? Oh, I always carry it about my person. Here we are. Now, that's asking for trouble. Hide it someplace quick. Oh, I know a good place. I'll hide it for you straight away. Oh, I'll take that one. <laughs> <laughs> Bring 
Why are those double crosses? He doesn't do He wants revenge. Yeah, um, about that. 
It seems like you've got an addiction to cheese. Ah, I mean, that would be right, but only mild. Cheddar cheese, chewy cheese, and Cheshire cheese, mostly. That's <laughs> a bit cheesy. It's cheesy, but I'm choosy. And a chunk of chewy Cheshire is my chosen cheese of choice. <laughs>
Out you come back. Show your face. How do, Mr. Silver, says I. Look who's crawled out of the bunghole, says you. <laughs> Very bad. If you haven't come and say, oh, Long John's baking yet. Yeah, <laughs> but you'll still face the gallows when we get home. Ah, but you might I be near you in a war. You were going to kill me. That were just the gold talking, lad. The gold was talking to me. But how I see for what it is. Now have a look. Out to that beach there. Look at those two ships. Two boats? Aye, lad. They're coming to look for you. So how's about when they find you, you take that one, and I take the other one? Oh, must be Penny and my mum. Oh, thank goodness. Well, I don't know. We have come a very long way for nothing, and we really don't want another passenger to feed on the way home. What do you guys think? Keep us cutlass, says I. Good idea. He's not to be trusted with sharp objects. No, we don't want to hurt himself now, do we? And I so don't like what. Okay, Mr. Silver, you've got two minutes to make your escape. Gentlemen, I'll be thanking you. Words of a kinder gentleman I could never have heard in my life. I'll be seeing you there, lads. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, we can run fast to the peg leg. <laughs> Let's have a bit of fun, says I. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Still no sign of those wretched pirates. Hang the pirates! <coughs> I'm not worried about Jeremy. Hey, look what I found. A treasure chest. Be aboard the Golden Venture now. Treasure store, stored even. Oh. And ready to set sail. They've beaten us. Oh, not oh. only that, they've murdered us. Oh. Oh. This is the ghost of Captain Flint. Oh. Who dares to come looking for my gold? Oh, did you hear that? I'm frightened. Well, if it's true what they say about Captain Flint, we don't want to talk to these ghosts. What if it creeps up behind us? Behind oh, us, I'm sure our friends out here will help us. You will want you boys to get on. Yes! Come on, I'm coming. Come on, I'm coming. Yeah, of course I am. Oh, 
Oh, God, to see you, lad, but what on earth is going on? That's what they'd like to know. <laughs> no, it's okay, everyone. It was just Matty Bev. Ain't you talking, Matty Bev? You can take that seal bottle off now. Come on. Oh, we had scarf fell off. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Everyone, this is Matty Bev. Oh yes, all been done for. Well, except Mum John, that is. Yeah, we gave him the slip. Oh. oh, well, at least the pirates never got the treasure then. Oh. No, but nor did we. No gold after all this. Oh, just as I had the selfie stick in the pack for gold, then we'll bring you to. It's okay, though, we've still got the gold inventory. Hang on. We don't have a crew of sailors. Oh. Oh. We'll be your crew. I'm sure Matty Bev would help her, I called her Bev, thank you dear, and return to her passage home. Why, I don't suppose you'd have a bit of cheese about your ship. Oh, oh. Well, I went half a ton of stinking bishop in the hold. Oh, stinking bishop? That's one of my favourites. Oh, swap it for the treasure, says I. Treasure? You mean you've got Flint's gold? Well, I've had three years to find it, take it up and stash it away in me cave. I don't believe it. Get old Batty Bed.
so I've seen it in a minute, Well, well, that's the gold stashed away in the hall now. So we're all getting ready to go home. But we thought we'd come out and see you and maybe have a wee sing song. Is that a good idea? Yeah. Why yeah. oh, not? What about we see shanty? Oh, yeah. Do you know anything? Uh, what's that one? Oh, that sail went to sea, sea, sea. That would be good. Did you know that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, what about what we sing through? Yeah, what about we competition? This side versus this side. Yeah. Nice side's going to be
saying and then not to do it tonight. It's just that we're going to have a very big vote of thanks, but I think we have to thank everyone who's been concerned with this panto. There's a lot of work goes into it. You can see the people on the stage, but there's a lot, a lot of people working away backstage beforehand and on the night. So I really think we have to thank all these people for what they've done. So I'll be very brief and I'll mention them all and perhaps you could just give them one big vote of thanks at the end. Now to start off with, we're so lucky to have our band here. They are so good with us and they bring the whole panto to life. So I'm sure you'll agree with me there. The costume, the costumes, look at that. I mean, the, the principal's costumes all come from a professional company, but the chorus costumes are all made by ladies who beaver away sewing and then are all running about backstage, changing all the people in time to get on the stage, which is wonderful. Now, we've also got our scenery. Now, you can see the scenery. Now, I happen to know the girl who does that works here, and she was here during the night doing it, because it just suddenly appears, and she's so talented. But the names are all in the programme, so you can see who they are. We also have our choreographers who work away here with these young girls who are marvellous, the little ones. I couldn't go, oh, I couldn't do it, but well, there's a reason for that. But <laughs> anyway, they work so well with the, the young ones and the older ones, the older ladies and gentlemen as well. So they work away as well, and the music coordinators who get all this music together to put it all together at the end of the day. Now we also have our backstage crew. Now you never see them. They work away here quite, you know, busy pulling bits down, putting bits up under the direction of Peter, our stage manager. So, I think, I hope I haven't forgotten anybody who's concerned up here, uh, but uh, that, I think, is that right? Have I missed anybody? Don't think so. Oh, no, no, that's busy. Oh, I've been so busy. <laughs> Just nice to be up here instead of down there, you know. And you'll get up here eventually and I've it long enough. Anyway, uh, we also have our people in the hall who beaver away there. Uh, the teens, they all have a nice cup of tea or coffee in the interval. Sure you enjoyed that, but we have that. And we also have our front house staff who go by selling raffle tickets, bits and pieces. And I'll tell you, again, with the production, I forgot, and I didn't mean to, the lighting people and the sound people, because it makes such a difference. Here, that we have all these professional people who come and help and we're so very grateful. But if we didn't have the one person who brings it all together, there wouldn't be any plan to at all. Because she just beavers away, does all this work, gets it all ready, comes up here with always a smile on her face. And that makes such a difference. Because I wouldn't be smiling sometimes. <laughs> but she, she smiles all the time and it's just fantastic to work with her. So I hope you'll all put your hands together before we mention that person again to all the backstage people and all the other people who can get them. our producer and our director who has just been fantastic all through, loved by everyone. So would you put your hands together and give a great big thank you to Lindsay Morrison. Thank you very much. Safe journey home and we'll see you next year. <laughs>